Once upon a time there lived a miser who was so wealthy he could have bought half the world had he wanted to. But he did not want to because being a miser, he loved nothing more than his money. And he hated nothing more than to spend it. One Christmas Eve, as the miser sat counting his gold, he heard a knock at the door. And when he opened the door, he saw a tiny old woman in tattered rags shivering against the cold. Please, sir, she said, might I have just a crust of bread to eat in a moment to warm myself by your fire? Well, the miser was so angered at having been interrupted while counting his gold that he immediately called for his dogs to chase her away. But in that moment, he felt a sharp, cold pain in his chest. And then he felt nothing at all because the tiny old woman was really a witch with magical powers and she cast a spell upon the miser, changing his human heart into a heart of glass, a cold, hard heart that did not beat and could not feel. So now he no longer felt anything, not even love of his money. He began to visit doctors, asking them to lift the spell and return to him his human heart with its human motions, but the doctors shook their heads. They could not cure what ailed him. Finally, after trying and failing with the doctors, he tracked down the witch to her cottage in the middle of the forest. She said that she could lift the spell, but the price for her services would be one half of everything the miser owned. Well, the miser had been a miser so long, he could not bring himself to give her that much money. And so he continued to travel the world, hoping that somewhere, someday, he would find someone who could somehow help him to lift the spell, and in so doing, regain his human heart, and with his human heart, of course, his human emotions. After years of searching, he tracked down a wise man he had heard about, high on top of a mountain. When he told the wise man his story, the wise man said, it's simple. You can lift the spell simply by performing a single selfless good deed. But the miser had never in his life performed any kind of good deed. And now with his heart of glass, he could no longer tell right from wrong, good from evil. And so, of course, he failed repeatedly in his many attempts to lift the spell by doing that good deed and regaining his human heart. After years of trying and years of failing, he returned to the witch, bringing her one half of everything he owned. But she just laughed at him and said, I'm sorry, you're too late. I can still lift the spell, but the price for my services is no longer one half of everything you own. The price is now everything you own. Well, the miser returned the very next day, bringing the witch everything he owned. So true to her word, she began to lift the spell. She began by taking a human heart, the heart of a young man, and she placed that on one side of the miser's glass heart. Then she took another human heart, but this time the heart of a young woman. She placed that on the opposite side, leaving the miser's glass heart surrounded by two human hearts, that of a young man and a young woman. Then, of course, she took an arrow from Cupid's bow, and very slowly, very carefully, she began to pass that arrow through all three hearts. As it passed through the miser's heart, he felt a sharp, hot pain in his chest because it was the first emotion he had experienced in years until he thought of his money. When he thought of his money, the witch took out the arrow. And she took out the young man's heart. And she took out the young woman's heart, both of which still bore the mark of the arrow. But she left the miser as she had found him because he had not truly learned his lesson. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please remember, it is far better to be a poor man with a human heart than to be a rich man, a miser, if all you have is but a heart of glass.